Oh yes, I'm finally getting around to it a few days later than I had maybe intended, but you know, it, it, it's just the way things work out with real life kind of getting in the way. Uh, thankfully, I have my health. Hopefully all of you have your health as well. Stay safe, please. Just be patient. We will get through it. We'll be back to normal eventually. Just gotta ride it out and flatten the curve. Ironic. We want to flatten curves. And usually we don't want to do that with our women. Um, but yes. Anyways. I told you guys I would do a QA, and a And I am here to do a QA. and a So let's go ahead and get started. And you know, I had kind of opened up the floodgates here. You could ask me whatever questions you wanted. And that's what we're going to do today. Um, first couple of questions all I kind of dealt with... Um, COVID-19, how would I grade Trump's handling of the situation? That's for Master Havoc. Mark asked my full opinion on COVID-19 and the reaction to it. Um, I'll start with the Trump part first. I don't care if you're a MAGA guy or not. It's your business. I do not care. But you cannot tell me his initial response was good, productive, or in any way helpful. It wasn't. It just wasn't. He was more paranoid about how it was going to look and potentially hurt him and his re-election chances than getting out in front of the problem. And the reason we have the problems that we do now is in large part due to the lack of fundamental leadership at a key time that Trump displayed, period. It's not up for negotiation. It is not up for debate. This is fact. The lack of action, and in some cases the conspiracy peddling, oh, here's another hoax, has put us in the situation that we are. That does not make the virus Trump's fault. That does not mean that Trump alone shares in the responsibility of the spreading of this, in the responsibility of the lack of response at state and local levels. You had governors, mayors, Republicans, Democrats alike, that we're still telling people to go out there and conduct their daily business, to still go out there. And by the time they started changing their tune, and in some cases, like in Florida with DeSantis, they still haven't changed their tune, it was too late. For those that think it is an overreaction, it probably feels that way. Because the vast majority of people, even if they get this, will not die from it. But you've got idiots out there like the Charlie Kirks of the world and these other conservatives. Like, I didn't think being a full-fledged right-wing loon meant that you couldn't understand basic mathematical concepts, such as, who the swine flu? There were 60 million infections and 12,000 people died. A ding-dong dumb dick. When you look, especially at the number of cases pertaining to swine flu, if you want to accept that as the total number, the death rate of that H1N1 slime, flying flu, whatever the hell it was called, was significantly lesser than even common flu. Now, I realize that you've got these clowns that have to defend Trump no matter what due to the cult of personality that he has built around himself. I could not imagine for the life of me ever feeling, ever feeling, and ever feeling that way about any politician regardless of political leanings. People need help. You need help. Whereas COVID-19, this coronavirus, if you had 60 million cases based off of current United States death rates of 1.5% to 2%, you're talking about 900,000 to 1.2 million deaths. That would account for half of what we see in total deaths for all causes and reasons in this country every year if you assume a standard rate of about five deaths per second. This is not hard to grasp. This is not Ebola-level dangerous in terms of a strain. But if you talk about you had 60 million cases, which could still potentially be high, yes, I certainly grant you that. But when you extrapolate out that percentage of deaths related to total number of cases, even if you said you got to 50 million cases, that's 750,000 to a million deaths. That's like taking a lot of major cities in this country and totally wiping out the population, like zombie style. Here in Virginia, that would be like taking the populations of Virginia Beach and where I'm at here in Richmond, 
and everybody's gone. Yes, it sucks. Um, I blame the politicians in Washington, specifically Congress, as grossly negligent as Trump's initial reaction was and some of his team was. I look at Congress and they're taking weekends off when you need to get stimulus money out there. How ironic it is that socialism is evil until things start to affect the stock market and Wall Street and big corporations. Oh, so no, my God, socialism is the greatest thing ever. Then that is capitalism for the needy and the needy, of course, being the big corporations. Like you look at that legislation, the coronavirus aid bills. You know, the, the first things that should have been happening is no student loan payments for three months, no represent repossessions, no foreclosures, freezing all of these payments, not giving money that would be largely unchecked to massive corporations. I'm not saying that it's not important to keep those corporations alive because even though that's unpopular to say, the reality is, is millions upon millions of people are employed by these major corporations. As a result, you can't let them start suffering. Nonetheless, when these corporations have been profiting exponentially more with Trump's tax cut, you know, they should be able to dwindle through some of their profits first and stay afloat and be just effing fine, meeting their payrolls and other expenses. They weren't the priority. $1,200 one time into everybody's hands is going to be a whole big bucket of not damn much. Not damn much at all. That ain't going to make two hella beans of difference. You got Democrats trying to go up there, let's forgive all of this student loan debt. You got Republicans, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to bail these executives out, and I'm going to do, like, everything that these guys are battling for. It's just, this is why we don't like politicians. This is why we don't like Congress. And this is why, especially when it comes to a Mitch McConnell, a Nancy Pelosi, a Chuck Schumer, or whoever the hell the case is, they should all be voted the F out, period. And if you like any of them, then you are delinquent contributing to the delinquency of the lack of leadership of this country. You should be damn ashamed of yourselves. And Jack Duncan asked, who do you think will win the 2020 presidential election? Oh, God. Trump is four years of piss-poor leadership, ironically enough, for the Biden buddies. I mean, imagine being happy about Joe Biden being your candidate. Like, how is it any better? Seriously, legitimately, how is it any better? This would have been a key time for somebody who was positioning himself to potentially be the next president of the United States to step up and show strong leadership. And instead, you got Joe Biden! Who the hell is going to be passionately excited about voting for Joe Biden? At least if Democrats would have gotten behind Bernie Sanders. As much as I'm not a fan of angry grandpa and would have ultimately not voted for that version of angry grandpa, just like I will not vote for Joe Biden, just like I will not vote for fucking Pumpkinhead in the damn White House. When you look at this, you, you got to be honest and say, at least Bernie would have gotten people emotionally invested in him and excited about his candidacy. Like, if you don't learn the lessons from 2016, history is doomed <laughs> you to repeat. And that's exactly what these idiots in the Democratic Party are doing. Like, whether people like it or not, this creates an entirely new opportunity. Because, yeah, initially, you know, the, some of the poll numbers are showing that Trump it's got approval from the majority of Americans and how he handles this. That too will pass, especially as reality started to catch up with people. They will get caught up with the reality of what actually happened in his gross failure in leadership. But Jesus Christ. Right now, Trump's the incumbent. Trump is still the favorite. If you run Biden against him, good God almighty, good luck. Give him a few months of trolling uh, <laughs> Sleepy Joe or whatever the hell he calls him on the campaign trail, and it's going to be very, very bad. So... Uh, Whole situation's a mess. Hopefully, eventually, we'll start getting back to reality. If we had gotten on top of it sooner, we'd probably be a lot closer to the finish line than we are right now. Uh, let's get back to the regular things. Enough of that crap. Vinny Los Benuso, where will Jameis and Cam go? I don't know. Good question at this point. I would have thought somebody like the Jaguars maybe would have been interested in Jameis. Maybe somebody like the Chargers would have been interested in Cam Newton. At this point, I don't really know. Danny Luckenheimer. Thoughts on Carson Wentz? Well, he was my quarterback one in that 2016 draft. Um, it's one of those things, 2017 season. He was on a trajectory to be the MVP. Then he gets hurt, and then the Eagles still go on to win the Super Bowl anyways. He's had a lot of trouble staying healthy. 
Uh, last year, for the most part, was his first truly fully healthy season. Uh, and then he gets into the playoff game, of course, and gets the concussion when Clowney hits him from behind in the head. Um, I think at this moment, he's like that lower level franchise guy. He's not elite, but he's not a buster, if that makes sense. Maliciousness, 205. If the Ravens are retiring numbers, should they retry, retire Joe Flacco's? Yes, he was their starting quarterback for a decade, went to a lot of playoff games with him, won a Super Bowl with him. Absolutely. The threshold uh, for some organizations in terms of retiring numbers is much lower. Joe Flacco deserves to have his number retired. Jordan Bryant, if the Bears clean house after 2020, who should be the next GM and head coach? Uh, and then he asks, if they fired Ted Phillips, who should replace him as team president? If the Bears do not make a deep and sizable playoff run in 2020, there should be a true house cleaning, and that starts with Ted Phillips, the former accountant who somehow, someway, um, gets to have this claim to fame that gave him a lifetime job for getting that crappy renovation deal for Soldier Field. I don't get it. Like when you talk about the mediocrity of that organization, it is epitomized by Ted Phillips. So when you're asking who the next GM and head coach should be, you're asking the wrong question. The correct question to ask is who should replace Ted Phillips as team president. And the correct answer, and the only correct answer as a starting point, doesn't mean it ultimately happens, but the only correct answer as a starting point is you make a call to Ozzie Newsom, you stalk around his house, and you give him a check that has a two, a zero, a comma, three more zeros, comma, three more zeros. You might think that I'm overstating it. You might think I ain't nothing. If you want to shake yourself out of the cycle of mediocrity, then you need to get somebody that is truly established and knows what the hell he's doing, and Ozzie Newsom clearly does that. If you want to play in the major leagues, if you want to be a marquee franchise, then that is the first call to make. That is the first call to make. You call Ozzie Newsom, you say, we need a team president. You get to run the entire show unfettered. You report directly to Virginia McCaskey. There is nobody else. We will pay you more money than you could ever have envisioned when you were the Ravens GM. Come in here and clean this shit up. Of course, it would never happen, but that is the conversation that must be had. That is the place that you must start. That is the first thing that they should be doing. They should already be in negotiations with them now. Raiders Films. What steps do the Raiders need to take after free agency to become a legit team? Uh, number one, find some help at wide receiver. C.D. Lamb. Number two, find more help at wide receiver. Number three, find themselves a long-term option at the quarterback position that is not their car. Maybe Joe Dunn Love. Maybe Tua. I don't know. Um, but those would be the first couple of steps, I would say, for sure. Know your role. Favorite Star Wars character and movie. Favorite character, Yoda. Favorite movie, Empire Strikes Back. Space Godzilla, where did you grow up? Rockford, Illinois. Oof. Talk about a shithole right there. Rockford, Illinois is the type of illogical place that you see in so many places around this country for manufacturing cities that never adjusted. Um, they sat there every time somebody wanted to bring a casino in. Oh, we don't want that. The Bible thumpers that will sit there and go buy the damn lotto tickets after church gets out on Sunday morning at the damn grocery stores and gas stations that hold everybody up. F off when they're scratching them off at the counter. These same clowns already don't want a casino there. And as a result, what happens? The casino goes 45 minutes away this way and 45 minutes away that way and that way and that way. And then all of that money that could have stayed in the local community or by God brought other people from outside of the local community to bring their money there. Instead, it's the opposite effect. That's the type of stupidity you deal with with a place like Rockford, Illinois. Fucking morons. Mark Whalen, are you planning to watch and or review WrestleMania? Yes and yes. And that's going to be weird, isn't it? Christian Mingle, I'm 23 single. Uh, should I worry about getting a girl or enjoy this single life? Now, everybody's circumstances and situations are different. And everybody's choices, you know, could be different. Here's what I'll say. You're 23. You got plenty of time. Sex can wait, just masturbate. Like, seriously, dude. No rush. If it happens, it happens. When it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, be okay with that. That could be hard. But be okay with that.
Because if you feel like you have to have that in order to complete yourself, what's going to happen, and I'm speaking from personal experience, you're going to seek out the wrong type of people who present the wrong type of things to the situation that aren't going to be the type of people that you want to associate with. And as much as you might eventually get heartbroken by that and you want to blame them, at the end of the day, it is on yourself. Because you're the one that opened yourself up to that. You're the one that ignored the red flags. You're the one that ultimately, and you'll notice I'm pointing at myself as I say this, because I'm trying to help you learn from my stupidity and mistakes. Like there's a very, very big part of me that as a younger, younger, younger adult man, that I would have ignored all the pressure of people mocking me and making fun of me. Oh, you're not even miserable with me. I wish I would have kept that way until I was truly ready. Because all women have represented to me in my adult life have been bad things mostly. And as easy as it is to just blame them, it ultimately is my fault. All the women are different. Who's the constant and the common variable? That is me. It's not on them. Now, what they did and how they acted and how they treated me or didn't treat me can be on them. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to me. So as a result, be patient, take your time, hit the spank bank. If anybody's got any judgments for you, they can kiss your ass, period. And maybe you're into that stuff. I don't know. No judgment here. Uh, Joe Jones, as somebody born in 1998, why are the Cowboys so popular? It is one of these situations where you have to look at generational components. The Cowboys of the late 60s, throughout the 70s, you know, under Tom Landry, and then especially in the 70s, you had Captain America, Roger Staubach. You had the man in the fedora. The Cowboys being marketed by NFL Films as America's team that were really, really good at that time, won a couple of Super Bowls. You're talking about an organization uh, that had the marketing machine behind them. They had the marketing genius of Tech Schramm overseeing the entire operation. A lot of factors at play as to why the Cowboys um, have such a large following. Because then you talk about, well, in the 80s, they were good, but not great. And then got really, really bad. But in the time of the early 90s, now the next generation, whereas the parents in the 90s, who were kids in the 60s, 70s. Now their kids are seeing the Cowboys at the top of the mountain again. Three Super Bowl titles in four years. So now, in today's world, you've got grandparents that grew up as Cowboy fans who pass it on to kids who are now parents that were Cowboys fans who have now passed it on to their kids who are Cowboys fans and see the Cowboys on TV all the time, regardless of whether they deserve to be or not, based off of their performance and non-field records. And that's why the Cowboys have such a large following. Craig HNIC, is it bad that I still listen to R. Kelly? Probably. But there are a lot of shitheads and jerks and a-holes, male and female, that we still find a way to celebrate. We overlook their flaws. Or they're really, 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 in the bad case of R. Kelly, really, really bad things that we know he does. Um, you know... I guess it is at this point. Crown Pirate. Are signs pointing to the Patriots tanking for Te Trevor Lawrence? I I would find that very hard to believe at this point. Do you really expect Bill Belichick to want to intentionally set out to tank for a season to get Trevor Lawrence? I find that very, very hard to believe. Killer B Man 616. Opinion on Drew Locke through his first couple of starts. Uh, I thought he looked okay. He certainly brought them life for the Broncos at the end of the season, but it was only a few starts. Let's not get too carried away and break out the anointing oils just yet. Um, Z Visions, how to fix the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, you can't have uh, the owner just be forced to sell the team, I guess. you got to go next step. Fire the general manager. Fire the general manager who drafted Blake Bortles third overall in 2014. Fire the general manager that drafted Leonard Fournette in 2017 instead of guys like Mahomes and Watson. Fire that general manager. Fire the head coach who was put in place by that general manager. That's where you start. Darren Faust, how many seasons do you think Nagy has left in Chicago? Well, let's hope to God one. Michael Strickland, who is your favorite James Bond? Sean Connery. Like, how is that even a conversation? Remove your pantish. Like, you just picture him saying that. And if you found out your mom or your grandma was fucking him, you'd be proud of it.
you be like, way to go, Brady! Way to go, Rock! That's got to be Connery. Uh, Ian, should the Patriots draft a quarterback at 23 or Cole? Cole, come on. Um, best player available? Best player available. Redskins recon. How soon can we expect a Redskins turnaround? You want my really honest answer? I, I think it could be as soon as this year. I really do. I like the hiring of Ron Rivera. I think that defense under the right type of head coach under Ron Rivera is going to be a lot better in a hurry, and especially if they end up taking Chase Young at number two. Uh, I like the Redskins as being one of those turnaround teams in 2020. I really do. MLS young boy, Jerry Angelo or Ryan Pace? Let's compare the two. This is easy. There is only one right answer. Ryan Pace has built a team that has made one playoff appearance in five seasons. Jerry Angelo, in his first year in town, his first major free agent signing was Brad Maynard, which is one of the best free agent signings the Bears have had in the past 25 years. And they went 13-3 and and won the division. Then eventually, after he fires Dick Duran, misses out on his buddy Nick Saban, he hires Lovey Smith. By year two of Lovey Smith, which is year five of Jerry Angel as the general manager, they won the division. Then in year six, they go on to make it to the Super Bowl with Turn Ferguson Rex Grossman as a starting quarterback. How is this even up for conversation? How is this even up for debate? It is Jerry Angelo, period. Ayatollah Angelo all day. And that's how bad it's been for the Bears. Ugh. Matt 92. Will MLB play all 162 games? My God. It'd have to be really, really hard to get all those games in without really delaying your season. I, I can't see them getting all 162 in. I just can't. Like, I it just... Maybe they're going to play like 112? I don't know. 130, 140, 162 games. Unless they do a lot of doubleheaders or they get rid of a lot of days off, which is going to be really, really hard in that short amount of time. 162 games is damn near impossible. Nigerian Night Nightmare. How's your dating life and do you see yourself getting married? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dating life now, not existent. Um, I think after the last long-term situation, like, look, I'll put it this way. When you move halfway across the country for somebody and then ultimately it does not work out, it, it Fs you up mentally, emotionally. It certainly does. You could try and play it off and you could dismiss it and pretend like it's not a factor, but it's a significant factor. And... It could take a long time to get that person out of your heart and out of your mind. And I don't know if they ever truly do leave. Like, I've tried after that with varying levels of success. Either A, not doing a better job of vetting people and ending up in similar types of, you know, envisioning similar types of situations or seeing somebody that maybe had some type of potential, but just not being emotionally ready and being cowardly about it. Like, you know, it's been a year and a half plus. It has not been good. It has not been good. Um, do I see myself getting married? The honest answer is right now, no. Uh-uh. I don't. I do not. I, I think it is one of those situations. I'm 39 now. Just had a birthday. Yeehaw. Still have a good portion of hair on my head. Yes, I know. It's peeking back a little bit more. But at 39, a lot of you wish you had this hairline at 29 or even in some cases 19. So chill the hell out. Unless. Um, I'm just not in the right place. I'm not in a good place mentally, emotionally. Like work has been incredibly demanding, too demanding, and I've allowed it to be that way. Um, I haven't balanced myself out in terms of work-life balance you know like I've started watching um, prospects for the draft but I'm so significantly far behind and it's discouraging and dismotivating and all these other things but I just think about it in general like you know if I can't have better judgment to pick the type of people that I should be involved with or want to be involved with then I need to completely remove myself from the situation because ultimately in a lot of cases 
I make the bad choices of being around bad people that are not good for me. And as a result, all that ends up happening is heartbreak and financial and emotional distress. So you reach that point in time where you have to reevaluate everything. They call it the midlife crisis. I used to make fun of it. And by God, am I right in the middle of it? Um, it's funny, but it's not that funny. It's deadly serious. And I just, like right now, I don't feel like I'm in a good place. I don't feel like I'm in a good place. And I don't envision the place that I'm in being all that appealing to somebody of the opposite sex. I just don't. And nor could I blame them. And I don't know if that's what you're seeking here, but, you know, some will say, oh, when you're not looking for it is when it happens. And let's be realistic here. A lot of times that is true, but it's also a lot easier for people to say that when they've already got somebody. You know what I mean? Like, and I've been on both sides of that equation, so I, I understand it and I get it. Um, but you know what? It's like there's a part of me that almost says, F it and F everybody and just go through the rest of my life alone. Like, and more and more, that's where I feel like I'm going. And, and maybe my perspective and opinion will change at some point. But, you know, if I'm either too stupid to recognize when people aren't worth my damn time or effort, or too stupid to recognize when somebody actually might be and I need to get over my own crap, then until I solve this, until I fix this, nothing else is going to get better and nothing else is going to happen. It's that simple. I got, I got to find, like, Nigerian Nightmare to answer your question most specifically and on a most personal level. Like, if I can't get right, I can't expect somebody else to help me get there. If I can't make myself better, somebody else cannot and should not be expected to do so. And I need to be at a place where I can literally, like, life is all about leverage and life is all about the power. Who has it, who exercises it, when, how, and why. The most ideal spot you could ever be in as a man, as a man, is when whoever you're involved with, whether you're dealing with women, men, whoever the case might be, if you have leverage, then you have power. The second, and this is going to sound harsh, but it's the reality, the second that you lose any leverage, you are after. So until I get to a, can get to a spot where I can go into any situation and say, you know what, if I don't like it, I'll just leave. If you don't like it, you can kick rocks. That's where you have the power. And life is all about power. Don't kid yourself. It's not about love. It's not about all this other romantic sounding BS they sell you when you're a kid. It is all about leverage and power. Who has it and who exercises it and can exercise it, how and why. That's what it's about. Um, so, yeah, recent experiences have not been good, and it's all on me. It's all on me. Choosing bad people, or maybe finding somebody good and effing it up. You know what I mean? Uh, Peter Jedra, should we expect any new format for your videos? Damn, at this point it would be nice, but we're lucky to get any videos out of me. Like I said, this midlife crisis crap is no joke, man. Like, I feel like I've lost my motivation for just about everything. There's no balance. There's no harmony to my life. i got to figure it out. I would love to say yes, but, you, you, Peter, at this point, you're lucky to get any videos out of me at all. Let's not push it too much. Uh, Storm closes out by asking us, will there be any lasting changes due to COVID-19? We might like to think so. We might pretend that there will be, but eventually, no. We won't learn shit from it. We don't learn. Why the hell would we start doing it now? Anyways, thanks you guys. This went a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but hope you enjoyed this Q&A. Uh, the ramblings at the beginning ticked you off. Too bad. I, I, I feel no sympathy whatsoever. Later.